Hello and welcome to our Q&A series with founder of the Orangutan Project, Leif Cox. Uh, Leif is a primatologist who's now been working closely with orangutans for more than 30 years. And he founded the Orangutan Project back in 1998 to help secure the survival of this now critically endangered species. My name's Marnie and I'm the philanthropy manager of the project. And in this series, I'm gonna ask Leif questions that are sent in to us through webinars and our YouTube channel and our social media. Uh, and I'm gonna ask Leif and right here, right now, he's going to answer them. And if you have a question that you'd like to ask, please just comment in the box below and we'll attempt to answer it over the next few weeks as we uh, run through this series. So thanks for joining us, Leif. This first question is from Ezadar, and she has asked, why are there so many orphaned orangutans? Mm -hmm. What is happening that is causing the separation of mothers from their babies? Mm -hmm. The orphan orangutans are the tip of the iceberg, because in fact, only one in six um, orangutans, which have their mothers killed, survive in, to be able to be rescued. So behind the vision of the young orphans um, being rescued and cared for, there are a great deal of orangutans and male orangutans, mothers and other small baby orangutans being killed. This is primarily happening because the habitat is being destroyed and being converted to unsustainable forms of monoculture such as palm oil and, and pulp paper. And the orangutans which are not killed during destruction because their food sources and from the habitat is taken away from them, they basically start to starve to death and try to raid the plantations or local community gardens to find enough food for them and their babies to survive. And they simply become an agricultural pest. On top of this, there's still a lucrative um, illegal trade in baby orangutans. So there is some criminal syndicates who will take advantage of the displaced and starving orangutans to kill the mother and take the baby for the illegal pet trade. So th this is basically the, the, the most visual sign of a destruction of entire ecosystem and entire species that is presented before us. Thank you. Uh, question two is from Sandy, and she is asking, why do you often say that there is a 10 year limit to your work to save orangutans? What happens after 10 years? Mm. There's two aspects to this. Climate scientists are telling us we've got 10 years to turn this around. Otherwise, there's these feedback loops which make the destruction of the planet into a, a place where we can't sustain the human population inevitable. Um, and, and it's no coincidence this is the same issue and the same timeline we're, we're facing for the orangutans and the rainforest. And, and so what I mean by we've got 10 years is as the rainforest disappears as a feedback loop, um, it creates less rain and we're getting more droughts, more El Nima effects, so longer droughts, rivers are drying up. Um, biodiversity and food productivity of the remaining forest is plummeting. So we're not only seeing orangutans um, being displaced and dying because the rainforest disappeared, the rainforest becomes less and less productive. And unfortunately, the people destroying the rainforest are targeting specifically the lowland and riverine areas because these are the most productive. They've so got the rich nutrients and have the constant water sources which um, allows their unsustainable monoculture to produce maximum income. But this is also the key areas, not only the orangutans, but the tigers and the elephants and other biodiversity need to survive. And, and so we've only got next, next 10 years to piece together enough viable ecosystems of the right type, shape and size of rainforest to allow sustainable numbers of orangutans to survive the extinction crisis. And of course, saving the rainforest is the most cost-effective way we can mitigate climate change. And we have to rewild about 30% of the planet to build a sustainable planet for the future. And that is highly critical that the Sumatran and Boyan rainforest is part of that as the most biodiverse, carbon-rich areas that in, in the world today. And, and so there's a joint effort between saving the planet and saving the orangutan, which is dovetailed in, as well as obviously saving sustainable economies for the countries of 
Indonesia and Malaysia. But one of the key points I also want to stress is when we're saving a species, we have to save the genetic diversity within that population. You can imagine if we're all genetically similar and the 2 million people who have died so far by the COVID-19 pandemic all share the same genes with us, the human species will be gone. Genetic diversity is extremely important to future adaptations, particularly from diseases. And as well as inbreeding brings up deleterious recessive genes. This is why we don't marry our cousins. Yeah. And so we saving a small number of orangutans in isolated forests also means those populations are doomed to extinction from inbreeding and lack of genetic diversity. And therefore, we need to save ecosystems which can support long-term populations of 2,000 orangutans and over. And as the rainforest continues to be destroyed, the opportunity to save ecosystems of this size and nature is reduced over time. And it's these factors combined which gives us the, the 10 year period of m maximum effort and, and impact in order to turn this around. Thank you. So you're saying there are still enough orangutans right now if we can secure those populations. It's not too late? That's the important thing is there is great hope and great ability. And for what is pocket change to many billionaires, $20 million a year, we can save five eight critical ecosystems, save the orangutan and turn it around and develop sustainable economies under the rainforest canopy with local communities so they become rich and prosper. So it's a win-win situation and we can do this now. So the 10 years is not about us giving up. The 10 years is about focusing our um, ability and strengths to work in what we call the most critical 10 years of human history. So this is 10 years in human history, most critical that will either doom future generations into a, a, a climate that will spiral into um, dysfunction, or we join together now to turn it around for a future for all living creatures on this planet. Thank you. Okay, we have time for one more. And that question is from uh, Tina. And she says, Leif, at a recent webinar, you said you were le seeking to legally protect degraded lowland forest. Wouldn't you prefer to protect native old growth forest? Yes, no, it's an extremely good question because if, if you just took the individual circumstances of the ecosystems in Indonesia aside, old growth forest has more carbon storage and more biodiversity. So naturally you would think, well, that's what we need to save. And of course, saving that is good. But the reality of the situation is w when they've destroyed the rainforest, they professionally, preferentially destroyed the lowland and riverine forest as the most accessible and most rich for agricultural um, land use. And, and therefore what we've found is, is that the old growth forest tends to be in the hills and the mountains, which is the least valuable, the least biodiverse, the least important to saying viable ecosystems and, and least important for the orangutans, tigers and other biodiversity. So in order to piece together viable ecosystems, the important part is actually the degraded previously logged forest in the lowlands before it's converted into unsustainable monocultures. And so this is the opportunity. The logged the forest is degraded, They've got two choices now because you can't extract any more income from um, selective logging anymore. They can do two things, give it to an organization like us and our partners, and we will restore the ecosystem to function again as part of a mega ecosystem, which does include the already protected highland old growth forest, or you give it to a palm oil plantation, for example, who will clear fell it, destroy it and create an unsustainable future. And, and so that's why we preferentially at this time seek degraded forests, which, which is counterintuitive um, because even if it's degraded in the long term, it's going to provide the ecosystems uh, services that we require for the species and the ecosystem to survive. Excellent, thank you. So our take home message I think for this one is that we are all working together to restore 30% of the planet to rich biodiversity. 
Yes, e e exactly. We not only have to um, reduce our carbon um, output from fossil fuels, we have to reform our agriculture um, to be sustainable and not release carbon. And we have to reform our diet and the exploitation of animals, which, which is another 30%. And we have to rewild 30% of the planet. So like everything, one and one simple solution is, is never going to do it. And that's the same with what we're doing with developing ecosystems. One solution doesn't fit all. It's a multiple solutions to, to save an ecosystems. And those multiple solutions, which combined will save our planet. Excellent. Thank you, Leith. And thank you so much for joining us today. Please remember, if you would like Leif to answer one of your questions, just write it into the comment box below and we will endeavour to answer it over the next couple of weeks. Thanks for joining us.